வணக்கம் வென் வி டாக் ஆஃப் இன்ஃபெக்ஷன்ஸ் இன் த ஹேண்ட் அக்யூட் இன்ஃபெக்ஷன்ஸ் ஆர் வெரி காமன் பட் கிரானிக் இன்ஃபெக்ஷன்ஸ் கேன் ஆல்சோ அக்கர் வித் தி இம்ப்ரூவ்ட் கம்யூனிட்டி பார்ட்டிசிபேஷன் அண்ட் த கம்யூனிட்டி ப்ரோக்ராம்ஸ் கிரானிக் டிசீசஸ் லைக் டிபர்கிலோசிஸ் அண்ட் லெப்ரசி ஹாவ் கம் டவுன் டிராஸ்டிகலி பட் ஸ்டில் வி டூ சி சம் கேசஸ் of tuberculosis and leprosy affecting the hand how do these infections affect the hand and what is the treatment and what are the unique features for instance when tuberculosis affects the hand it is very difficult to make a diagnosis but as far as leprosy is concerned the diagnosis may be quite obvious because of the deformities that are caused but the questions come in the management all these are dealt with in this video on chronic infections of the hand especially tuberculosis and hansen's disease or leprosy in the process of understanding chronic hand infections caused by tuberculosis and leprosy we shall learn how tuberculosis affects the hand what are the treatment options available how leprosy affects the hand and what are the treatment options available the hand can be affected by tuberculosis in four forms tuberculous verrucosa cutis tuberculous dactylitis tuberculous tenosynovitis and tuberculous arthritis tuberculous verrucosa cutis is the affectation of the skin by the tuberculous disease for the verrucal form the infection is usually self limited and it usually affects the hands in adults it can get secondarily infected if excision needs to be done of either the entire lesion which is very difficult or a part of the lesion which is more commonly done it must be done under anti tuberculous therapy cover tuberculous dactylitis or involvement of the finger or digit is also known as spina ventosa spina referring to short bone and ventosa referring to expanded with air it affects the short tubular bones like the phalanges and the metacarpals in the hand it affects children more often than adults when it affects children usually multiple bones are involved whereas in adults usually a single bone is affected clinically it runs a benign course without pyrexia or any acute inflammatory signs a plain x ray of the affected hand typically reveals a diaphyseal expansile lesion where a periosteal reaction is very uncommon healing is usually by sclerosis which occurs very gradually provided the anti tuberculous therapy is started so the treatment of tuberculous dactylitis is conservative management with anti tuberculous therapy surgical excision and curettage may be indicated in certain situations and if the carpus is involved a carpectomy or wrist fusion may be needed but the sheet anchor of therapy is the anti tuberculous therapy this therapy protocol is modified suitably from time to time the usually prescribed treatment is four drug therapy for 2 months followed up with a two drug therapy for 1 to 1 and a half years the third kind of affectation by tuberculosis in the hand is tuberculous tenosynovitis this can occur due to direct extension from adjacent bone or joint infection or it can be a hematogenous spread from a distant primary focus tuberculous infection of the synovial layer covering the tendon is a gradual process with progressive swelling pain and diminished range of motion or sometimes even total loss of motion when there is an attrition of the tendon and rupture of the tendon sometimes it may present as a compound palmar ganglion which shows a swelling in the palm and in the distal forearm being compressed in the central portion by the flexor retinaculum tuberculous tenosynovitis could occur in three stages and this can be seen only on exploration the hygromatous form where there is a serous exudate within a normal appearing tendon sheath the serofibrinous form 
where rice bodies appear in the synovial fluid and involvement of the tendon itself with granulation tissue may be seen. Intertendinous adhesions or complete rupture may occur in this stage. The fungoid stage, this involves extensive caseation and granulation tissue formation of sinus tracts and a cold abscess. X-ray findings in tuberculous tenus synovitis are quite non-specific. There may be evidence of soft tissue swelling with or without calcification and in chronic cases, joint space narrowing, osseous erosions may be seen. The MRI findings may be a little more specific in some forms of tuberculous tenus synovitis. In the hygromatous form, evidence of non-specific tenus synovitis would be present. In the serofibrinous stage, thickened synovium, tendon thinning, tethering or even disruption may be seen. In the fungoid stage, soft tissue mass formation extending beyond the tendon sheath would be pathognomonic. Let us consider a clinical case example. A 25-year-old man presented with the complaints of swelling in the right hand and inability to flex the ring and little fingers of two months duration. On examination, there was a soft swelling on the palm extending to the ring finger. There was a reduction in the active range of flexion in the ring and little fingers. Plain MRI revealed thickening of the flexor tendons of the hand and peritendinous subcutaneous edema, fluid collection within the flexor tendon sheath of the hand, proximally collection starting from distal forearm and distally collection extending up to the distal palm and distal part of the middle phalanx of the ring finger, impression was flexor tenosynovitis right hand. Exploration relieved thickening of the synovial tissue around the flexor tendons both on the ring and little fingers extending right from the middle phalanx proximally up to the distal forearm. The entire involved tissue was excised along with the pulleys taking care to avoid injury to the nerves and vessels. The histopathological examination showed chronic granulomatous inflammation suggestive of tuberculosis, hence anti-tuberculous therapy was started. This was the post-operative result at the end of 3 months. You will note that there is a flexor lag at the ring finger due to the absence of pulleys. When tuberculosis affects the joints in the hand, it could present in the form of a cold abscess, termed so due to the lack of production of proteolytic enzymes which results in cartilage destruction. But this form of tuberculous arthritis is rare in the hand but may occur in the elbow or shoulder. Before understanding the involvement of the hand in Hansen's disease or leprosy, we need to understand the five basic subtypes of Hansen's disease. Tuberculoid, tuberculoid, borderline tuberculoid, borderline, borderline, borderline lepromatous and lepromatous, lepromatous. Tuberculoid, tuberculoid and lepromatous, lepromatous are the two extreme types of involvement in leprosy. In the tuberculoid form, there is a small number of hypopigmented anesthetic skin lesions, usually less than 5. There is a low bacillary load with a bacteriological index less than 2. Hence, it is called posibacillary or PB. There is an early and limited peripheral nerve impairment. Usually, only one nerve is involved and this form is less contagious. The lepromatous form of leprosy is characterized by numerous infiltrated skin lesions, usually more than 5, high bacillary loads, otherwise known as multibacillary or MB. Here, the bacteriological index is more than 2. There is more impairment of peripheral nerves, usually 2 or more. And this form, that is the lepromatous form, is more contagious. The multi-drug therapy or the medical treatment of Hansen's disease depends on whether it is posibacillary or multibacillary. For the posibacillary form, Rifampicin given as 600 mg once a month as a supervised dose and Dapsone 100 mg daily self-administered is given for a duration of 6 months. 
for the multi bacillary variant rifampicin given as 600 mg once a month as a supervised dose dapsone 100 mg daily as a self administered dose along with clofazimine given 300 mg once a month as a supervised dose and 50 mg daily as a self administered dose is given for a duration of 12 months the mycobacterium leprae is the only bacterium that infects the peripheral nervous system and that too only the schwann cells of the myelinated and unmyelinated axons it is interesting to note that this mycobacterium leprae prefers the cooler areas of the body where they can multiply hence the involvement of the superficial nerves in the body like for instance the ulnar nerve which is just under the skin behind the medial epicondyle these bacilli can enter into the schwann cell by one of two methods one by retrograde migration from the cutaneous nerve or by hematogenous spread surgery in the leprosy affected hand is done in the following situations decompression of the nerve trunk for preventing permanent paralysis when the peripheral nerve is beginning to be affected surgery is also done for acute infections of the hand and surgery is done for correcting paralytic deformities and disabilities resulting from muscle paralysis and these corrective procedures are tendon transfers nerve decompression may be of two types external decompression or internal decompression by external decompression compression of the nerve trunk by structures external to it are relieved for example in carpal tunnel release the tight flexor retinaculum is released or in case of ulnar nerve compression in leprosy medial epicondylectomy can be done this is done as follows first an incision is made over the medial epicondyle and the medial epicondyle is stripped of all muscular attachments resection of the medial epicondyle is completed and the raw area of the bone is covered by suturing back the soft tissues this way the external compression by the medial epicondyle over the ulnar nerve is released internal decompression consists of epineurotomy that is the nerve bundles or fascicles are released from compression by the epineurium which has become thickened fibrosed or scarred a skin incision is made on the medial side of the elbow and exposure of the ulnar nerve above the cubital tunnel is made cubital tunnel release that is external decompression is done then the incision is made over the epineurium as shown in the diagram this releases the compression of the fascicles within the nerve the ulnar nerve is very commonly involved at the level of the elbow decompression of the ulnar nerve is an indicated procedure it needs to be done when signs of ulnar nerve damage appear or increase while under treatment for the leprosy the medical treatment consists of steroids 40 mg per day along with physiotherapy and a claw correction splint appearance of pain at the same site when the elbow is forcibly flexed passively beyond the limit of active flexion or when continued restriction of full active elbow flexion is present even while under adequate treatment in leprosy acute infections can occur in the fingers or in the palm the infection in the fingers can occur under the free margin of the nail known as apical infection in the pulp of the finger or vitlo or in the nail fold near the base and sides of the nail known as peronychia in the palm infections can occur of the common flexor synovial sheath known as the ulnar bursa infection or infection of the flexor pollicis longus tendon synovial sheath known as the radial bursa infection the procedures of tendon transfers are done to replace the deficit caused by paralysis of some of the muscles involved by the nerves in hansen's disease discussion of all the tendon transfers is beyond the scope of this video however you can access information about different tendon transfers by clicking on the icon above we shall discuss the timing of tendon transfers 
in patients with leprosy affecting the hand. The patient must have shown good clinical response to multi-drug therapy. He has had no reaction or neuritis within the previous 6 months. He must be having no tenderness of the nerve trunks and he must have had the deformity for at least one year. Summarizing, how does tuberculosis affect the hand? It could affect the skin, it could cause dactylitis, tenosynovitis or arthritis. What are the treatment options available? Excision of the synovial involvement. Sometimes, if there has been rupture of the tendons, tendon reconstruction procedures, but anti-tuberculous therapy is the sheet anchor of any treatment. How does leprosy affect the hand? It can affect the peripheral nerves. It can cause acute infections in the fingers and palm. And what are the treatment options available? Nerve decompression, surgery for acute infections, and tendon transfers. I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. Please click on the shown links to see more about other surgical procedures in hand surgery. And do not forget to subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning hand surgery, trauma surgery and ethics. Vanakkam.